I think we're supposed to start. I don't think there is a bell. So let's go take our seats. Welcome. Did you have a, did you hear that? Yeah. It's a loud bang. Uh, did you have a good long weekend? Oh, there's that bang. There's that bang. Glad to be back. Welcome. I'm glad to be back because we're going to talk about film criticism today. Oh, but before we do that, let's quit. Um, discuss the assignments that were due over the weekend. If you didn't turn in your screenplay or your uh, make your own movie, hurry and get that in. Especially the screenplay so I can start grading those and then I'll get the movies after that. Uh, remember, I don't take points off for being late, so don't be like, oh, I'm gonna fail anyway, I'm just not gonna do it. Still do it so you can get a good grade. Um, and then tonight you are saving Mr. Banks' essays. All right, questions? Okay, you're excited about film criticism? Yay. <laughs> yes, let's talk about film criticism. Uh, this may be a job that you find. Oh. I'm gonna start again. Welcome to class. <laughs> uh, this may be something that you find you wanna go into as an occupation, is film criticism. Your requirements are that you like film, you like watching movies, and that you like writing. Ooh. And if you like those, it's a perfect job. Perfect job for you. But let's talk about what that what it means. So, um, I need my chair. Criticism is the attempt to, oh, and by the way, you don't need to write all of this down word for word. I'm gonna post it on Canvas as soon as we get out of this class, so you can go back and look at it if you need to. If there's something that just really inspires you and you wanna jot it down, um, so it's the attempt to discover and interpret the meanings and intentions of the film or filmmaker that extend beyond the film's surface feature. These meanings are multidimensional and complex. Okay, so here we are uh, in film criticism. We are interpreting what we think the the play or not the playwright, the screenwriter or the director or somebody who helped to produce it. We're interpreting their meaning. What did they, what were they trying to get at with this, okay? And it's complex. We're not just looking at, um, oh, so-and-so was a great actor. It's so much deeper than that, okay? So, film criticism is a form of rhetoric, and you all know what rhetoric is, and maybe you just don't know that's what it's called. Rhetoric is the skill that we use to persuade someone. The aim of persuasion, so a film critic seeks to persuade the reader that a given interpretation of a film is right and true. So we write something about a film and we want everyone to read it and say, oh, yeah, they know what they're talking about. I believe them. I believe that they know what they're saying and when I go and see the film, I will also think the same as they did. That's how you know that you have been successful, is if you can persuade somebody to think the same as you. Okay, so like I said, if you want to be a film critic, here are things you need to be able to do. First of all, you need to be able to enjoy a movie. Okay, second, you need to know how to write well. Next, you need to know how to construct an argument. Which you should, you should know how to do that. I think we've been doing it like in every grade since we could, we could write. We're writing arguments. And the next thing is you have to know how to select evidence. What things in the film support your argument? You can spot those things, write them down, and you're good to go. Okay, so those are the requirements for a good critic. Anybody decide that's what they wanna do for a job? Not yet, not yet persuaded. Okay, we'll keep working on it, we'll keep getting there. Nope, I'm not in. <laughs> Stop calling me. Here are two very famous film critics. Has anyone ever heard of Siskel and Ebert before? They're so famous that no one has heard of them. Uh, they are dead right now. They're currently deceased. Um, they were in their prime uh, in my day, back in the 80s, 90s. Um, that's everybody knew Siskel and Ebert. Um, back then, film criticism or critics uh, they were on TV, 
And that's how you knew you had arrived as a film critic, is if you had a show on TV where you would sit down and you would talk about movies. Um, we don't really have that nowadays, but I feel like you could go on YouTube and find a million people who are doing that, right? Uh, but back then, these were the two. These were the ones that everybody followed and everybody listened to and everybody believed. I am not 100% sure on this fact, but uh, let's pretend that it's true. They, have anybody seen the Muppets, the two old hecklers <laughs> that sit on the balcony? And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I think they were inspired by these two real people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, my interpretation or the, the... Well, like the Muppets just kind of look like an uh, extreme version of them. They do, right? Yeah, they do look like them. So that's why I think that. <laughs> uh, so we're going to watch them in action. We're going to watch them, oh, and by the way, they worked at, they wrote for two um, competing uh, newspapers in Chicago. One of them worked for the Chicago Sun-Times, and I don't remember the other, the other newspaper, but they competed against each other in their writing, but then together they had this TV show. I think it was called At the Movies, or In the Movies, some preposition, and the movies. So we're gonna watch them talk about the movie Jurassic Park that came out in 1993. We've all seen it, right? Or hopefully, well, a lot of us have seen it. Uh, but none of you were alive when it came out. I was, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was very, very, well, we'll talk about it after. But let's watch what they think about Jurassic Park. And as we watch it, think about what are, what are they talking about? What elements do they bring out? What things do they focus on to make it a successful critique? All right? Are we connected? No, we're not. Now we are. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now <laughs> you're selling it. You're going to sell it. Well, I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't start to think they should. As you might expect in the movies, when man plays God, he loses, and the dinosaurs are soon running free. Look at the really beautiful direction changes, just like a flock of birds evading a predator. They're, uh, they're flocking this way. There are children under attack, too, in the park, the grandchildren of the park owner, Richard Attenborough. Despite their presence, however, in my opinion, Jurassic Park is too intense for children under the age of, say, 10. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. Turn the light off! Jurassic Park has a number of peak thrills at the level of the attacks in Jaws, and it has moments of real wonder. But when the animals are off screen, the film really lags. That wasn't true if you think about it with Jaws, which had three marvelous characters hunting the shark. Jurassic Park only has Goldblum, the rest of the crew stands around and smiles or schemes. Still, thumbs up for me, the action scenes are really enjoyable. 
I give a thumbs up to, and also for the action scenes, and I feel that really this movie, though, is a missed opportunity, because what he doesn't have here, and what I really missed from a movie by Spielberg, like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, oh. is the sense of awe, mm -hmm. the sense of majesty. These creatures are back, and it's amazing, and yeah. right away, after an opening shot that has a little of that, yes, it does. the movie disintegrates, basically, into a monster picture, where the dinosaurs are chasing everybody, and the people are running away, and there's lots of action, yeah. and lots of screaming, but there's no, not really uh, any opportunity to really give these creatures their due. It's almost like the movie doesn't have any respect for the intelligence of the audience that they might really be interested in dinosaurs instead of just in the action. We could have we could have used more scenes. Mm -hmm. You're right of of awe, and, that's, and and that's well, I think you're just right. And I think you're right about whether or not it's too intense for kids. Now I've talked to some parents who have really prepped their their children. They've yeah. said, look, the kids in the movie don't get hurt. Yeah. And the dinosaurs are just special effects, or their animation, yeah, or their model. Get, yeah. And to a degree, I think you can prepare children for a movie like this, but at the same time, I think there are scenes in this movie that are very intense. Now, it's being aimed at kids. I think yeah. it's being promoted through dino beetles at McDonald's, and a lot of kids are going to want to little see this ones. movie. And I think for the little ones, it's going to be too I've heard stories. Of, I've heard of uh, parents taking their kids out of the theaters over this uh, opening week. Uh, yeah. uh, little tiny kids under, under the age of 10. Okay, what did they talk about in their critique of Jurassic Park? Conrad? Well, I was expecting Doug Goldblum as the only good one there. <laughs> All right, so they talk about who's in it. They gave their opinion that he's the best in the show. I would agree with that. Besides whoever played the T-Rex, that guy was awesome. Okay, so an actor, what else did they talk about? Okay, good. The appropriate age. Uh, we compared it to Steven Spielberg's other films. Great, yes, we got a little information about, well, Jaws, right? Mm -hmm. Did it talk about any others? I can't remember Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, yeah, that's right. Uh, the plot structure and like how it takes a long time to kind of put together a story and how it's okay. Yeah, a little bit of the plot structure and the plot. Period, right? They talked about the story, what it's about. Okay, what else? They agreed that the action scenes were good, but the just in between the action scenes was kind of lacking in character dialogue, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they both agreed on that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? time with the dinosaurs. That's what they wanted from the movie. Okay. Uh, did anybody feel like your opinion of Jurassic Park changed after you heard what they had to say about it? No. <laughs> I felt like, oh, I guess I'm wrong. They, they thought that, but I, I still think it was a really great movie. Um, I don't really ha see any flaws in it. I remember when it came out. I think it was 10 or something. It wasn't that 10. Nope. 11. I was 11. Oh, so you're old enough. So I was old enough, according to what they had to say. I was, But I do believe I was a little bit um, disturbed by it, which explains a lot about me now as, a, as an adult. Uh, I blame it all on Jurassic Park. And then after I watched the movie, I went and read the book that it was based on, which is even more graphic than the movie. And so then I was even more disturbed. But it's a really, really good book. If you're... Did you know it was a book before it was a movie? Okay. Yeah, they didn't really talk about that in, well, they didn't at all talk about that, but it was based on the Michael Crichton book of the same title. Um, so the movie in 93 won the, um, the Academy Award for Best Sound Editing and Best Sound Mixing. Um, I think well-deserved. That scene where they're in the, the Jeep the, you can hear the rumble of the T-Rex's footsteps. Awesome, it's genius. Before there was even surround sound. Um, and then they won Best Visual Effects. So three Academy Awards. I don't feel like uh, 
Steven Spielberg felt very bad about that because he also won a lot of Academy Awards that same year for Schindler's List, which he directed. Uh, best Picture, Best Production Design, Best Original Score, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Film Editing, Best Cinematography, and Best Director. So it was a good year for Spielberg, I think, in 93. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So let's, uh, let's look at a list of things that need to be in a film critique. And the, let's go back here. There are three different types of, crit of criticism. We'll get through a couple of them today, I believe, if it goes according to plan. The first type is called a newspaper and television review. I feel like the title of that is a little outdated now because we don't really see reviews on TV anymore. Um, nowadays we see them everywhere, everywhere else. And it's super easy to do it. Anybody can be a critic now. Um, it's super easy to create a blog. It's really easy to make a website and it's free. Um, also, everybody's got social media, right? And everybody can share their opinions. It might be, you know, just a sentence like, Jurassic Park was really cool or something. Great visual effects, Jurassic Park. Thumbs up. Hashtag Steven Spielberg wins again. I don't know, something. <laughs> right, we can all be critics somehow. But we're gonna talk about this specific one, newspaper and television reviews. Um, so here we go. Here, are, and some of these you already brought up when we talked about that last review. So they're prepared for a general audience. That means the content that's in it is appropriate for a child to read or watch or an adult to read and watch. Nothing in that video was disturbing for a small child, right? Maybe if they watched the whole scene with the T-Rex attacking the Jeep, maybe they'd be disturbed, but just that isn't gonna frighten them. Um, so it's prepared for a general audience. It answers our immediate question. Most importantly, it answers this, should I see the movie? And they said, thumbs up. Yeah, they both said, yeah, see, we should see it. If you're over 10, or at least prepare your children if they're not, okay? Uh, provides a plot summary, it did. Discusses the stars that appear in the film, it did. Jeff Goldblum. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed this, they didn't talk about the characters' names, because nobody cares about that, especially if they haven't seen it. Um, it just says that he was in it and talked about... Um, he played the mathematician character. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it talked about uh, the other characters, or the other actors, I can't remember their names, but yeah. Okay, um, provides a brief statement about the film's general theme. What's a theme? You should remember this from 11th grade literature. Theme is... Yeah, a takeaway message, the lesson, right, that we're supposed to learn. What did they say? What would you gather from what they said the theme of Jurassic Park is? Toby? When man plays God, he loses. Yes, I'm glad you caught it. That was like word for word. When man plays God, he loses. So, if you ever decide to clone dinosaurs, just know you will lose, right? We have like five movies now to prove that fact. They're making a sixth. They're making a sixth? They are. It's a trilogy. Wow. Who knew? I didn't. Thanks, Conrad, for that info. Yeah. I was about to say, um, don't don't make dinosaurs when they eat you. Yep. Um, That's a great theme. Yeah. Don't make dinosaurs. Okay. Uh, then we've got the reviewer focuses almost entirely on whether they liked or disliked the film. Um, they didn't just say one thing, that they, I mean, they didn't just say, I like it or dislike it. They talked about both in this one, didn't they? Things that uh, they didn't like. Okay, so that is what's in a newspaper and television review. Now, there are weaknesses to this type of review because they must be brief, and I'm gonna come back to that word in a second. Reviewers aren't usually able to provide any historical context or perspective on the film they're reviewing. Now, brief, um, it, when they're writing for newspaper, there's a price for every letter in an article. 
So they have to be briefed in these reviews, otherwise it gets expensive to do it. Um, or I guess on TV, it, the, the longer you take, the more air time you have, the more expensive that's going to be. So they, got, they have to be briefed. Nowadays, when people write on a blog or a website or social media, you can say all the words you want, right? And it's all for free. Um, but if you want people to read it, you might not want to be really long-winded because they might stop, and you want them to be persuaded by reading all of it. So we usually leave out the historical context, either about um, the time frame that the movie takes place in or the time frame that the movie is made in. Um, we didn't really hear about how it was a book first. We didn't talk about um, I don't know, any historical context. They gave some perspective, but they didn't spend a lot of time on their thoughts about it or how they got to those ideas, because they have to be brief. Anybody watched Mulan yet, the live action? Some of you did? OK, all right. Is it good? Yeah, I liked it. Okay, all right. I have only seen good comments on Facebook. People I know are, you know, they'll say, I hate the live action movies, but this was the best one, or this changed my life, or something. I've seen really good things really about cool. it. I love the cartoon, so I'm excited to watch it. But I'm not spending $30 to watch it by myself. So, movie party, right? Let's, yes. yes. You can all pitch in. One dollar. <laughs> One dollar entry. Um, let's read this review about Mulan. If you have a phone, take it out. You can scan that QR code. If you have a, an iPhone, just click on your camera and hold it up and it will come up with the thing to, to go into that link. If you don't have an iPhone, you might need um, an app. Or if all else fails, I also have printed copies. Would anyone like a paper copy? Um, if I can find them. I'll find them, but spend a few minutes and read that review of Mulan. Here it is. We need a paper copy.
Okay, we're going to go back to our list here about newspaper and television reviewing. Uh, we're going to point out things from this review that fit into these bullet points. Okay, so we're looking for something that shows that it's prepared for a general audience. Okay, or something that provides a brief statement about the general theme. Or, should we see the movie? Okay, what did you find in there to support these points? Okay, should I see the movie? Well, it's one of the best, or is the best? I think it's one of the best. The best live action remake. Okay, yeah, that makes it sound like we should probably see it then. Okay, what else? Really? So it said it couldn't be more relevant, vital, and alive. Okay, so what does that fit in? Where does that fit? It's kind of prepared for us right now, I guess. Okay. Oh yeah, that's what we want to hear, right? In this crazy time, a movie that's perfect for us. Yeah, I like that. Um, you kind of talked about like women empowerment, which was, it was their theme to like briefly state like the Me Too movement and then at the end you kind of talked about all the female leads and how it like just empowers women. Yeah, excellent, that's a great theme. And that's why I said at least skip and read the last paragraph because it talks about it says, loyal, brave, and true. She's all of the above on her own terms. It's a great theme for females, right? Or for anyone, really, but especially at this time for females to, to be loyal, brave, and true on your own terms. It's up to you, ladies. Hey, uh, any other things that you saw there? I thought it was funny. They described one of the actors as handsome. I can't remember which one that is. He's kind of the love interest. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> uh, Did you notice the, the links, the blue links, hyperlinks? Uh, this goes in, I think, with the general audience point, that if, you, if you're not a guru on Hollywood actors or film or anything, uh, you can click on those links, and it will take you to another article to learn more about those people. So that's what I think uh, fits there nicely. Okay, so that's the newspaper and television review. Uh, let's go on and talk about the next one, which is general interest journal-based criticism. All right, so it's uh, somewhere between the newspaper and uh, television review and the third one, which is um, scholarly reviews, somewhere in there. It's a, it's a happy medium. Um, there is more space for the writer, there's limitless space, and there's not a, search, a, a sense of urgency to get it written. The newspaper and television review, you wanna get it out before the movie opens, right? Or opening weekend, so that people read yours first and then they go and see the movie and they believe you. But this type, the general interest, it can come out, you know, month after it opens or when it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever, there's no urgency there. Um, these uh, reviews are more detailed, more sophisticated, and they talk more about things like structure, and they get deeper into the message of the movie. So maybe we talk about, we talked about structure in the last unit. They delve into this, this structure. Maybe it's, you know, the, the different uh, frames, or maybe it's the, you know, two um, structures or two timelines coming together, whatever it is. They talk about that sort of thing. Provide some historical context, um, like I said about the time the movie was made or the time that it's supposed to be. Like, it, uh, was it last year? Little Women, the movie came out, and I read this review that was all about time period, and they talked about the costumes in that movie were absolutely not correct time period. And that's all they talked about. They talked about time period, what did people actually wear, and what did the costume designer put the actors in. So that was interesting. It gives them behind the scenes information, which I love. That's why I love the Mr. Banks movie, because they, they learned a lot about the making of the movie. Uh, it's more in depth on the plot. And then of course they still answer, should I see it? But more specifically, who should see it? Kind of like the Jurassic Park one. You should see it if you're 10 years old or older, right? Or you should see this if you really like romantic comedies. Or don't see this if you have a weak stomach because there's a lot of blood. So give you that kind of information, okay? 
So tomorrow we're going to look at a couple, uh, one of these, and then we'll go into the scholarly criticism. We're going to watch a trailer for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, the old one from um, the 89, 1989, and then the new one that came out this last weekend, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen Bill and Ted, watch it tonight. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. There's two of them, actually, and then the new one is the third one. So we'll talk about Bill and Ted tomorrow. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. A little teaser for you to come back. And the bell will ring any minute. So I hope you enjoy your day and that you are productive and responsible and safe and healthy.